You've probably heard the saying, AI won't replace you. A person using AI will. This was a viral tweet, 5 million views, and I think it resonated because there's a lot of truth to it. As a software engineer, it's unlikely that our whole job will be replaced by some AI. But another engineer using AI can definitely replace me if they're way more productive. But what does it mean to use AI in your job? In this video, I wanna share a framework for how you can apply AI tools like ChatGPT and Bard to your job today. First, I think it's worth clarifying, what is the end goal here? And I would say that for many of us, the goal is to become a mythical 10X engineer. These are engineers who have 10 times as much impact as their peers. These engineers certainly exist, but they don't become 10X engineers by writing 10 times as much lines of code, or they don't fix 10 times as many bugs. Instead, they understand the concept of leverage, and that manifests primarily in two ways. Number one, you take a challenging problem, and a better engineer might solve that problem in a 10x or 100x better way, either in terms of resiliency, efficiency, or some other metric. Or number two, a 10x engineer can take the people around them and make them more impactful. You can take 10 people or even 100 people around you and make them a bit better at their job, and that's huge impact. So really, the question about how to use AI becomes a question about how can AI help us find more leverage? I've been a tech lead and staff engineer at companies like Meta and Pinterest, and the best engineers I worked with and the best projects I was lucky enough to be involved in, the outcome I don't think will change that dramatically, but the use of AI in getting to that ideal outcome will certainly change how we work. Shreyas Doshi has something called the LNO Effectiveness Framework for PMs that talks about where you should spend your effort. And I think it applies really well here in the context of software engineering. The idea is to categorize the work you do into three buckets, L and O. So L means leverage tasks. These are things which you can have a 10X outcome and it's worth doing a great job. N means neutral tasks. These are things that you should get done and you should do a good job, but they're not really gonna move the needle. And then you have O tasks or overhead tasks, and these are a drag on your time. You have to get them done, they're a tax, but there's not really that much benefit or impact to you or the business from doing that work. So the way to think about Bard and ChatGPT is to focus it on making you more effective at work in the L or leverage bucket and have you spend less time on things in the O or overhead bucket. An example of a task which is high leverage is to create a really good system design document for a project you're about to embark on for three or six months. This is high leverage not only because an architecture is inherently hard to change over time, but also because this design document will be a really critical trust building exercise between you and your team. A concrete example of how you can use AI then is to ask what might go wrong. And you can include these edge cases or failure modes in the document and talk about what you're going to do to prevent them or if you're making a deliberate decision to not pursue a defense mechanism. And that makes you just way more complete, way more thoughtful. Another example could be to use AI to summarize the past work in that field. So there's either past literature in the public or there might be past experiments that your team or company has tried in the domain you're working. And it's worth actually figuring out what went wrong or what succeeded in those past experiments and embed that in your own design document. And that's a really great use of an AI to pull all that information in and summarize it for you. And finally, you can use the AI as a really smart colleague. You can just give it the general prompt of here's what I'm trying to do, what do you think are the best approaches, and you can see what the AI says. And half the time, maybe even more, the response that your AI colleague will give you won't be any good. But it's so quick to interact with the AI that it's just worth doing as a baseline. And it's a good sanity check to make sure that when you communicate with your team, you're not missing something obvious. And that leads to communication tasks, which are one of the highest leverage things you can do as an engineer. Whether you're documenting a system design or you're presenting at a team meeting, communicating with others such that they want to work with you is key to your promotion and your seniority at any company. ChatGPT has excellent empathetic written communication. This is valuable for everyone, but especially if English is your second language, like it is for many engineers, then you should absolutely use ChatGPT for things like thanking others, asking questions, and sending project updates. Effective communication is a foundational skill of software engineering, along with things like doing really good code review, working with your manager, and building up trust with the team. And these skills, which are actually really hard to get right or to learn effectively through AI, these are what I focus on in the company I'm building called Tara. We have master classes, live events, and really high quality discussion with top engineers in the world. So check it out at jointara.com. You can take part in the community and learn a lot from observing how other people grow their career. When it comes to coding, depending on what exactly you're writing, I would put that either in the L, leverage bucket, or in N, the neutral category. We can use AI tools like Copilot to dramatically reduce the amount of time we spend here. For example, a lot of the code we write is boilerplate, setting up a project or setting up a framework, and all of that scaffolding can be done for us using ChatGPT or Copilot. We can also get more things done in the flow of work. 
For example, Copilot can complete code for you, or you can ask your smart chat GPT colleague about how do you write a function. And that means things like Stack Overflow, we don't have to take that extra hop to find and search for the best answer. In fact, the traffic to Stack Overflow has gone down 14% since the launch of ChatGPT, which I think is a indication of things to come. We can also use AI to better understand what's happening in the code base. For example, regular expressions are notoriously hard to read and decipher. We can plug that into AI and get an answer of what it's doing, or we can plug in some code and ask it to turn it into more idiomatic or simpler code that we can actually understand. Finally, there are tasks in the O or overhead category that AI can help minimize. The classic example here is writing your performance review. In big tech companies, people will spend hours or even days writing down what they've done and what business impact they had. But ironically, that has no business impact. There's actually a group at Meta called PS see memes for procrastinating teens. And the idea is that in the week leading up to the deadline for submitting your self-review and all of your peer reviews, everyone hated the whole process. It's very painful. And so people just procrastinate a bunch and post a lot of different memes and jokes in that group. AI can really help reduce the tax that we all pay for performance review by making it go a lot faster. For every engineer I talk to on Taro, I recommend they have a brag document, which is a list of all of the accomplishments and impact they've had throughout the half or throughout the year. And then come performance review time, I recommend that they basically massage all of their work that they've done in that brag document and put it into the template that the company requires. So for example, at Meta, there were four axes upon which engineers were evaluated. And so I would take all the work I did and then add a bit more color and put it into the correct bucket and you know add some kind of narrative cohesion behind it. And so the work of taking that document, that brag journal you have and converting it into a first draft of the self-review, which I think is the hardest part, a lot of that can be done for you by ChatGPT or Bard, and that can save you hours or even days of work. As you go through your day or your week, you should try and identify what are things that are really not helping you or the company make more progress. And think about how can AI be used here to reduce the amount of time or reduce the effort it takes to complete this task. The last thing I wanted to say is that in the same way that most engineers now are pretty effective at Googling, like we know how to search a particular website, we know how to put things in quotes or not search for certain words and we find the results we're looking for, that same learning is now taking place for everyone when it comes to using AI. So things like explain that step in excruciating detail or explain it like I'm five. These are tricks to get the AI to collaborate with us in the way that we want. And so it's worth spending time to understand how can you ask higher quality questions to the AI? How can you interact with it in a more effective way? ChatGPT won't magically make you a better engineer. But just like any other tool, if you use it correctly, it can make you a lot more productive, a lot more effective at your job. Let me know how AI augments your capabilities as an engineer, and let's all become 10x engineers using AI instead of being replaced by AI. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.